How can we stop being cynical in a cynical age? That's what we're going to talk about today. Inside every cynical person, there's an, there is a disappointed idealist, George Carlin. You know what's funny is if you Google cynical quotes, you will get very funny quotes that are cynical instead of quotes about being cynical. But there are some good ones out there. I highly recommend it. Today, we're going to talk about what can we do when we find ourselves being too cynical? We live in a very cynical age, and I think two concepts are getting clouded together. The idea of not being fooled. We don't want to be tricked. We don't want to be fooled. We don't want to follow in a bad way. So we believe that the opposite of believing everything is being cynical. And instead, it's not exactly true. The opposite of not falling for everything is being discerning, telling, see, there was my big word, telling what is the right thing and the wrong thing. Cynical goes a step too far or goes the wrong direction where you're actually just losing faith in everything, where you don't believe anyone and everything is bad and nothing is ever going to be successful. And it's not a healthy way to be any more than being so open-minded, as they say, that your brain falls out. You want to be discerning. You want to be able to be critical, not in a bad way, but of noticing what is and is not true, what works or does not work, or where we know people who are believable people or instead aren't. And cynicism removes the humanity in us. It removes our ability, I think, to be compassionate on other people. And so then I think our enjoyment of life goes down if we become cynical. It's easy, you know, at times to become cynical about things because we get disappointed. Just like George Carlin was saying, we have ideals. We hope that we would live in an age of flying cars and Star Trek peace, and we don't. And so we could be practical about it and say, you know, being Star Trek, that's a little pie in the sky. No one was ever going to be Star Trek. Star Trek cannot even be Star Trek. It doesn't work that way. That's okay. We can make life much, much better. And here's my 10 ideas I have to make life better. Or recognize we're all flawed human beings. We all screw up from time to time. And give people a little bit of grace and a little bit of forgiveness for where they screw up. So instead of going down the cynical path where we look at people, the cynicism brings us to a point of almost anger, disbelief, disregard. And we even blame other people for our cynicism because look at them. They're not even aware of how rotten X, Y, and Z is, or they don't even see the world like I see the world. I'm the realist. They're just dumb or they're just blind or they just don't look at things. And instead of looking at these situations with cynicism, instead, let's start looking at things for a problem. What can we do to solve a problem? We just look at something then cynically instead of in a problem solving way. We're just going to say, well, nothing we can do here. Life sucks or this sucks or this is bad or that's bad. And then we're done with it. But when we reframe it into something like, I can actually use my experience. I can actually use things that I know. And I understand that I can impact the situation for the good, that I can stop lamenting and start being prepared to do something good and bring about whatever change we can. I remember during one election, I was talking to someone and they were kind of mad about the election. And I thought to myself, because this person was mad, you know, when it comes to politics or it comes to anything in our life, we can get cynical about things. I think the real question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to vote the next time? Are you going to help fundraise or donate money? Or are you actually going to go out and work for a campaign or do something positive? Maybe you can't change how things are, but you can work in a group that does change things how they are. Can you go out and do those types of things? And if you're really not planning on changing your own behavior, if you're really not planning on changing your own action, there's really no point in digging down deep and getting cynical about it, right? Now it's just poisoning your life. So the idea is I'm either going to act or I'm not going to act. And if I'm not going to act, let's just drop it. And if I am going to act, let's also just drop 
the negative emotion about it and start thinking, what can we do to take positive, small steps in the right direction? And the other thing that you can do is if you know there are things that just naturally make you cynical, maybe it's politics or maybe it's a particular topic in your personal life, maybe it's something you could just avoid. You don't watch the news on a nightly basis. You know, the world goes on without you, without you watching the news. Or perhaps you just avoid that topic. This is just something that burns a hole in me. And I have some of those. I have a topic that every time I hear it just burns a hole in me. I don't want to even talk about it. I don't want to discuss it because there's nothing I can do about it. What's the point of just burning myself down because of that? Why don't I just take efforts in things I can change, things I can move forward, things that make me happy, just avoid the things that get me into that spiraling cynical mood. It's funny because I'm a very positive person overall, but there are still things that can make me feel cynical about things or certain aspects of life. I just avoid them, to be honest with you, because I know there's nothing I can do to fix it. Then we have to make sure that we don't fall into these holes over and over again. I think the internet does a funny thing to all of us when we're cynical about a particular topic, because you will see something where someone sees something horrible on the internet and everyone says, did you see what Bob said on the internet, and then we'll show you. And they'll keep spreading around. Everyone's like, that's disgusting. I can't believe Bob said that. They are like people who say, wow, this is spoiled milk. You should smell this. And all they do is go around showing everybody what bad milk smells like. Why would you do that to anybody? Why would you go around on the internet in particular and try to make everybody negative, bring people apart, tear people down? You probably think that if Bob is kind of a jerk, I don't know who Bob is, and people like you probably think Bob is a jerk, why bother saying anything at all? It's not changing anything. Chances are, one, you're probably wrong. Bob is probably not a jerk. You just probably don't agree with him. But everything you are seeing is framed in a way to make you think Bob is a jerk. It's not about being a healthy skeptic. It's about being a negative person. Okay, so whatever it is that you feel, Just walk away from it. There are better things to experience. There's greater things to go through in life. There are challenges that you could make a positive motion on instead of you just sitting there being negative, bringing everybody down. And it's just not helpful to anyone. Instead of going down this direction, start looking at the positive things that you can do constructively to make things better. Then think of even curiosity. So maybe you can't think of anything. Something went horribly wrong. Your work has turned into a negative place. So you could be that person who just increases all the negativity in your workplace. I mean, I've seen it before, too, where someone has something about a company and then they invite a bunch of people to go to lunch and they say, did you see what the boss did? Your boss did this and the boss did that. And they're trying. And I never had a thing about it. Either I'm going to go to the boss and I'm going to say something and say, you know, I love your company, but I think you're wrong about this. I think that we are bringing people down. Or I'm going to try to find a way of making the negative side effects of whatever the boss is doing go away. There are things that you can do. And if you can't do, there's no reason to increase the cynicism, the negativity, maybe even the whining about something. Instead, It should bring out your other side and think, hmm, is there a creative way I can make things better? Is there a creative way that I can improve this situation? If morale is bad, is there a way I can increase morale? And sometimes you can't change the negative thing right there, but you can change the thing above the negative thing. Maybe your job is making you negative. You can't fix that company, but you could get a new job. Give you an example of that when I worked at my last company, people hated the annual performance review. It was theoretical. You had to put everything that you did, and, and then the boss had to put everyone that they are in charge of into these buckets of exceptional, superior, medium, below standards, terrible, right? So everyone fell into five buckets. And first of all, no one knew what that meant. So everyone would come to me because I had worked in the company for such a long time and say, Jill, I just got my performance review and everything was 
meets standards. I feel like I made a mistake coming to this company. I think I'm screwing up. I think I'm not doing a very good job. I think I should go find a different job and go find something else to do. Now, this was somewhat I thought of as a very high performer. And because high performers get what would be a C grade meets standards on their annual performance review, they think they screwed up. They feel uninspired by the performance that we've got. So I didn't know what to do. And I suggested something to the head of HR that was bold. Let's try to write our very own standards for performance reviews. And we came up with a theory. I, I had I, I talked to some people ahead of time and we wrote up an explanation of what we would like to see out of an annual performance review. Even if the raises are exactly the same, this would be something that would be beneficial. And we came up with basically these core aspects of your job that you have to be great at. And then people would be able to rank themselves on those core standards as they compare to everyone else in the team. Now, maybe you're not going to be right, but suddenly when you got your first performance review, you saw, oh, you know what? As a developer, I'm very good at writing and troubleshooting code, but a lot of my code has memory problems. I need to learn next year how to do a little bit better with that. Or maybe there were people on my team who were wonderful troubleshooters. They just didn't communicate nicely to customers as well as they could have. So they're going to take a couple of classes on being a little bit more effective in their communications. For me, I'm a terrible writer. So I took classes through the university extension on how to become a better writer. I walked away from that performance review with tangible tasks. And so we did the impossible. We took something that made half the company want to quit and turned it into something that everyone could walk away with things to learn how to do something better. We made a positive change. So a place where everyone was cynical and saying, oh, well, we can't change how we do performance reviews. I just have to realize I suck, you know, or something really terrible about what they were saying and made it better. So if you get stuck feeling cynical, is there something creative you could do to make the whole situation better? Instead of lamenting about your terrible performance reviews, which were perfectly nice, but the wording made it sound awful, can we instead give you valuable ways that you can go on? In the end, being cynical is toxic. People don't like being around people who are cynical, just like the people who make you smell the spoiled milk. It can lead to sarcasm. It can lead to pessimism. It can lead to negative health diseases. You know, people who are down, People who are stressed, people who are negative can have increased health issues and it can actually lead you to depression. Nothing's good. Nothing ever works out. Nothing ever goes my way. And if you start saying this to yourself often enough, you got to start learning that message. So it's of the utmost importance that you get away from it, that you can start embracing positivity, that Maybe if you're cynical, you talk to your friends and say, you know what? I'm trying to get out of this. I'm so sorry. I've been so negative lately. I'm trying to do more positive things. The biggest thing is that you don't want to be fake positive. That's no good for anyone. But realize that in life, there's good and bad. In life, there are things that are going to go your way and there are things that are not going to go your way. That is just how life goes. That is the same life for everybody. But can you have gratitude for the good things? Can you look at things that are actually positive in your life? Can you catch yourself when you're going down a cynical spiral and be positive and pull out those things that are actually very positive? And if you can't, try to go out and have some fun. Get out in nature, go for a hike or go for a fun time where you're hanging out with your friends. Sometimes I think, too, one of the problems with cynicism is maybe we start hanging out with cynical people who are like us, and now we're just fueling each other's negativity. Can we change that cycle? Can we become friends who do something else instead of tearing everything down? Or maybe it's time that I need some more positive friends. Maybe it's positive people that I need to learn how to meet and be with. 
when we're doing these things, we're going to look at a more realistic way of life. It is not more realistic to be cynical. I have had people tell me I'm cynical because I look at life the real way. It's not. They're good and bad. And so if you can actually have that gratitude, be more positive, look at the best qualities in people instead of the worst qualities in people, you can still have a realistic, meaning that you're looking at things honestly and still have positives and negatives. I don't think that there are many people on this earth that I would look at and say they're all negative. Now, clearly there have been people in the past who have been all negative, but not any people I know. There are good points and bad points to them at all. I have known people who are very straight shooters and say exactly what's on their mind, which some people take as negative. But instead, that person's going to make you better because they're telling you the truth about something that needs to get fixed. That person is also fantastic at fixing them. Or there are people who you may not like, but they're looking out for a certain aspect in society. Maybe you disagree with them politically. They're looking out for something that is on the hearts of people, and they're going to help make things better because they're representing a voice of some people who don't feel like they're being heard. It's all about figuring out the pluses and the minuses and looking for practical ways with small steps that we can start making things better, maybe even going in that other direction and curing the problem instead of just being in a rut about negativity about the results of a problem. So my challenge to you is take a look at one thing that just makes you cynical in life, makes you disappointed every time you read about it, and see, can I come up with at least 10 steps where I could help make that situation better or mitigate, reduce the impact that that thing has on my life and on the lives of my friends and family. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can look at a better life in smallsteps.com. That is the main blog for everything that M, my friend, and I do. She's the writer, I'm the talker, and so you can also find all the podcasts there as well. I have three other podcasts, six episodes every week of some form of podcast. So maybe if you like this one, you might like another one. And remember, our walk away from cynicism starts with small steps. Small steps.